for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another full breakdown video for you guys today. Uh, every month, if you guys don't know, if you're new to this channel, if you don't follow, I put out a full breakdown of an offense or a defense from one of my ebooks uh, out free for you guys, for people that don't buy the ebooks or don't pay for my additional content, my subscriptions, all that stuff. So I try to have a free book at least once a month. If you guys want me to continue Woo! to do this, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section, and especially let me know in the comment section uh, what book you guys would like to see me do next i've already done an offense and a defense the first offense i'll have links in the description for both of the videos that i've already done but the first offense i think was the niners because that's one of the most popular offenses every year and last month i did the chiefs which is one of the meta defenses in the game this year and it has been for a very long time so i'll have links in the description if you guys want to check those out this month i'm doing the green bay packers which has some of the meta formations in the game like the gun tight offset te uh, a lot of really good formations that i will make sure to have stars in the title on the chapters so if you guys want to jump ahead to what i'm recommending as the best offenses from this playbook just look for the stars next to the titles in the chapters which is something new i'm going to start doing in this video but like i said as always let me know in the comment section any improvements that i can make at the end of the day these videos are really meant to show you guys what you get in the ebooks but you ultimately get a lot more in the ebooks there's a lot more plays there's a lot more information uh, and it's much easier to navigate so if you like this video and you want an even better breakdown of it if you guys want to check that out just click the link in the description for your favorite playbook or the top pin comment you can download these books instantly to your phone laptop or even have them sent to the email of your choice other than that thanks for watching as always and i'm gonna get right into the video next up we have the mesh it's another play that can really get open against a lot of different things all these drag routes are very good um, against man coverages and most zones it's really a good short yards play things like this are good around the around the red zone and stuff like that Next up out of the gun bunch, we got the speed dig. It's another play you can really run out of just about any against any defense. I'm just gonna put the A route on a streak, the B route on a drag, and we're gonna have a deep crosser and a shallow crosser that works in just about any defense. Here it looks like we have a cover one man or a cover zero man. You can see how that route just gets right across and beats that for an easy one play touchdown. But this is really about the RB route and the B route. The uh, the X route's a really good uh, check down as you got another crosser, although I don't know what's up with that pass. I don't know if that was a cover three or what. It looked like cover three. It looked like another one play touchdown. This play is a very good play against cover three. We'll do that again and we'll see how, you know, we have our check down with the drag if we need it, but the RB route is a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. So you can see how quickly that gets across. No real issues there at all. Very easy one-play touchdown against man and cover three. Also has success against cover four. We'll have to back out and find a cover four drop. Same setup. Blocking the running back. It's helpful, but it's not, you know, it's not a necessarily a need. So I'm going to do that one more time. From the hash mark to the open side of the field this time. And now you can see how this guy here can beat that cover four, although I probably should have safe caught. I'm not sure if he was in bounds or not. But still a very good play against cover four. Next up we have the verticals. Start off with cover two. Against cover two, just put the RB route on a streak. And then motion out the B route. You can put the A route on an out route, or you can put the X route a drag. I mean, I put him on an out route and then put the X route on a slant for a check down. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm really just trying to, to isolate this wheel route outside here for a big catch and run. The tight end was open over the middle, too. They both get open against cover two. Well, that's not even a tight end. It's Cliff Watkins now, so even better. But the A routes are pretty good check downs. You can see he's open underneath. I mean, I could take that. I mean, it's, it, everything's open here. You know, I mean, cover two is not a very good defense right now in Madden 22, but it's really easy to attack outside like this. Let's go ahead and let's hit the, uh, the Quez route real quick because it is there. As long as I can body that, you can see right there. I mean, it's, it's not as open as the outside routes are, though. Has a similar effect against cover two, man. Do the exact same setup, and you'll see he just runs around the potential jam. Although the um, the tight end was open too. Again, I mean I was watching the tight end when I threw that ball, but you can see everybody's open the same way. 
against cover three. It's not as good, but if you motion this out, a lot of times the uh, the A route will just get open right up the seam. That's probably the best thing you can get out of cover three out of this right now. You can put the X route here on a comeback once again and put the uh, the A route on a streak and the B route on a drag, similar to another play that I put out. And the RB route should get open across the field again, although I don't know why I didn't catch that. I guess it was just a bad throw. I mean, I was good accuracy. We'll do that again. And we'll get, uh, we'll get that playoff at some point. Why is he not catching this? Well, you can see it's gone. We'll do it one more time. Just because if it lets me. So do this one more time. Like I said, that, that RB route is just streaking. I don't know why I didn't catch any of those. Next up we're gonna do cover four. Exact same setup. Should be the exact same results, although this takes a little bit longer because you gotta wait for this guy to pass. It's to the point too, when I get that pass lead that I might not actually be able to catch it in bounds. But we'll do that again. So just wait till he crosses that safety and then boom, there we go. That'll be it. If he catches it, yeah, there we go. So we got an easy one play touchdown against Cover 4 regular as well. Next up we got the branch return. Against pretty much any defense, you can just put the B route on a streak and then the A route on a flat. And you can really work the flat and the uh, the RB route concept together. If it's a man coverage, the flat route won't work. But if it's a zone coverage, it'll typically get open underneath any of them. Against cover three, against cover three, put the B route on a streak. Motion out. You put your running back on a route and then motion them to the line. Then put the X route on a streak. And this is pretty much going to be the play. The B route will get forgotten uh, at some point by the cornerback. And then you can bullet and pass lead up the field for a very big play. If you streak the A route and the B route, the RB route will get open against just about any defense, man, or zone. Um, as you can see right there, they're going to completely disregard him in the uh, in the uh, the shorter route because everything's going to get pulled back by the double streaks. As you can see right here, he has to react to that or else you know there's a chance he get beat for a one point touchdown. So very big play. Next up, we have the Z spot. It's another play that can work against just about any zone coverage. The B route here, I'd put on like a slanting check down. But at the end of the day, if it's a zone coverage, I'm reading the A route first. If it's there, I'll take it. If it's not there, typically the B route will be open above it. I'm sorry, the RB route since I'm on this side. But ultimately, it's going to be the same thing. Here we got a man coverage. Like I said, I wait for that RB route to get open. And it looked like he had position, but we still got that over the top. So man or zone, that route should get open against just about anything except for cover four. Next up, we have the four verticals. Start off with Tampa 2. To block the tight end, you just have to motion them across the formation, and then you can basically put them back on a pass block. Then the outside receivers will both beat cover 2, although in reality, the Y route will also. As you can see, he runs an option route, splits the safeties. Next up, we'll do cover 3. Go ahead and pick cover 3 Sky. I'm just going to streak the A route, run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field, put the Y route on a fade, and put the X route on a comeback route. And the Y route here can be an easy one play touchdown. If you uh, if you watch the cornerback, he hesitates on that comeback route just enough that you can get separation and get past him for an easy one play touchdown. Just bullet and pass it away from the safety. Next up, we got the inside zone. It's just your bread and butter run play. It's going to be a very consistent, successful inside run, especially because this defense really spreads apart the uh, your opponents because of the wide receivers basically being the whole length of the field. It's going to be it's going to give you a lot of opportunity for big runs. This is very good, uh, you know, dink and dunk formation with a very good um, spread for run plays. Next up, we have the middle high low. Start off with cover two. I'm going to motion this guy in and put him on a streak. I'm going to put the A route on a drag. That's pretty much it. The Y route is going to be the read as he's pretty much going to get around that cover two cornerback. Although there he got bumped a little bit. Still made the play. Uh, might have to wait a little bit longer before making that throw. You can always motion across the tight end too. 
so that you can leave that uh, that drag out there doing what he's doing and then that'll also create this guy getting open um, over the drag so the drag can actually help against cover two. There's two ways to run it next up we got the quarterback draw anytime your opponent stretches their defense too thin just hit him with a draw play you always have a run play even though it's with the quarterback a lot of people think that you know they see an empty backfield and the run's not an option but you can always hit him with this run play. And it's a very good run play. It's still as good as it always was as long as you have a mobile quarterback. Next up, we have the Y corner. This play here, you just got to motion in the X route, put him on a streak, and then put the A route on a drag. You can do anything you want with the other routes. But the Y route should get outside of just about any man or zone. As you can see right there, that's pretty much, I don't even know what it is. It doesn't matter. This route will beat just about anything. They look like a man coverage. I tried on everything, including cover four. It worked the exact same way on all the defenses. You can see here, just as long as you wait for that guy to get outside the cornerback, bullet and pass lead away, he'll beat every single defense in the game. Next up, we got the halfback power O. Just a good outside run. It's going to be best against, um, you know, spread defenses, cover three, cover four, and man coverages. Next up, we got the PAY cross. This play's really best going to the running backs and the tight end. If the if the zone coverage, typically the, the RB route will be open for a catch and run in the flat. Next up, we'll start off with cover two. This is an easy one play touchdown. Just put the B route on a 10 yard out route. That's all you really have to do. And I mean, you could block a running back or two because you can see the pressure gets there pretty quick. But you can see how they split the safeties. I'm going to go ahead and put my B route on a 10 yard out route again. I'm going to block the Y route because that's something that doesn't really help too much. And that way I can get a little bit of extra pass pro. But you can see how this easily splits the safeties with sag off. I'm not quite getting the throw that I want. I'll go ahead and I'm going to move the ball back to the center of the field. So this play here, just put the B route on a 10-yard out route. You can really block any number of players after that, but I'm going to block the Y route. That's the probably the most disposable. And then you can see how you can really get this going right up the center just as long as I, I get that towards the middle a little bit more because the safety really lags off based off of the 10-yard out route. Next up, we'll do cover two man. It'll be the same setup. and It's going to have the same effect. I'll block both running backs because that other running back doesn't really beat man coverage either. And you can see how you can get right up the middle here once again. Although this time we actually get the catch and run score because we got a little bit of a better pass. So you can see how that works against cover two man or zone. Next up we'll do cover three. So I'll put the wide route on a streak. Block the running back or the other running back in the uh, tight end. And put the B route on a curl. This is going to be the move. I just have to navigate the pocket a little bit. And you can see how this guy here is a one-play touchdown against cover three very easily. Next up, we got the RPO zone peak. The slant's typically best against man. The run play's typically best against zone. Although, in reality, the run play's pretty good against uh, man as well. You're really just reading the linebacker that's marked with the P there. If he drops back into that slant, then pretty much have to hand it off. It's really that simple, and it's a pretty decent run option, especially on the goal line. Next up, we got the shovel option. This play, you can really pitch it inside or outside. The inside play to the uh, to the running back is probably a little bit more dangerous of getting deflected. So that's something that, you know, maybe you want to try around a goal line or something like that. But the outside bumper, I feel like, um, is really the, the more explosive of the two. You could also keep with the quarterback there. I probably could have kept it. But you really have two different options the way to go. Like right there, you can see there's a hole in the middle. Go ahead and flip that inside. If they crash in on the quarterback, then you want to pitch it outside. It's really that simple. I said I'm really playing. I'm trying to see like a good opportunity to keep with the quarterback. Like you can see there, we fumble. That's something that can happen. This is a play that's kind of a high risk, high reward when it comes to um, you know things like that. Except we got the Y curl. This play is really just a, a man beater to the X route. It's pretty much the only reason you're going to run this. It's a tight window throw. I don't find this gets open as well as it has in the past, but it's still a good man beater whether you're facing man one two zone. I'm sorry, man one two cover two. Uh, man, any man coverage, this is going to get open just as long as the cornerback doesn't jump the route in the break. Like right here, he never really got outside of it, so I can, you know, force that away from the defender at any point in time. Based off of the new pass leading mechanics, you always have the ability to, to you know, basically pull, pull this away from the receiver to the point where it shouldn't get the ball in trouble too much. But that's really what this play is all about. If I call this play, it's going to be because I want to throw against the man coverage. You can see I'm getting a very consistent result. Next up, we have the Owen Trap.
Like I said, I don't know if this is the best inside run, but I definitely like this run. I think I like it more than the 0-1 trap. You can see it's a very explosive, uh, you know, run. There's just nothing really there. This is something anytime you have, I mean, this is not like something where you're choosing a hole. You pretty much have to have a hole right in the middle for this to work. Uh, but you can see this is another very good run from this formation. This is probably one of the best formations to start Madden 23 in as it has a lot of really good run plays and pass plays. Next up, we have the bench. You can run this play just like this, but to me it's best to just set it up the same way I've shown a couple plays from this book by putting the X route on a streak and by putting the A or the B route on a drag. I'd say putting the B route on the drag makes the most sense. Uh, this is pretty much going to be the look. Your Y route is going to be just about any defense, especially this man coverage, which we're starting off with. So you can see how man or zone, that's going to be a very good route. You can go the other way, though. If you if you think your opponent is using that side, you can just basically do the exact same thing on the other side. The drag is going to be there all the time. It's just a very good check down uh, with the crossing uh, drag route. And you could also set up some very explosive plays. Like right here, it looks like we have that man coverage one more time. Just another really good play. It's going to beat cover two, cover three, all that. I don't know if we might have a cover three here. We might have another man coverage as well. I'm not really sure, but we'll go ahead and we'll run it once it lets me run it. Looks like we're going to have a zone coverage this time. You can see once again, this guy beats it outside. That was a cover three. I got a bad throw, but you can see how that's going to get outside just about any zone coverage. It could be a very big play against cover three the same way the previous play was by streaking these outside receivers. Eventually, this X route here will be open once the cornerback fades away for easy bullet and pass lead away. You probably need a, an extreme speed advantage for this to work, but you'll see that once he f f basically covers that cross, or he just bullet pass lead away from the safety, and number 11 here, whoever's in your slot position or this receiver position, should have space from the safety. Probably is the same way with the tight end, but I, I don't, you know, typically go that route. Next up, we have the inside zone. It's a very good run play. I'm not sure if it's the best run play in the formation. It's either this or the 0 1 trap. But uh, it's very consistent. I mean, oh, uh, inside zones are some of the best every year in Madden. Um, I typically want to find some sort of advantage here, which I haven't really found yet. But you can see, you can have very consistent inside runs. Even there, I got about seven yards. So this is something that should always be in your audibles and always in your arsenal, no matter what you're, you're looking at there. Although J.J. Watt obviously is being a problem, uh, which can happen. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got guys like that stuffing the run in the middle, but it's still a very good run. See right here, we finally get a very good run outside. It's just a slashing run. I'm pretty much hitting the sprint button the entire time time and just looking for a one cut hole next up we got the mesh spot this play here is really all about the drags uh, if the drags are covered a lot of times um, the, the the comeback route the little mini hook route over the center of the field will be open especially if a user middle linebacker leaves the center chasing the drags that will a lot of times leave this guy just wide open although against the computer probably won't happen as much but I typically try to roll in the direction of the running back because that's really my reach it's going to be the uh, the X route there which I try to throw to even though I was talking and I didn't get it off uh, or the B route which is going to be the comeback route that kind of just sits in the zone on. Or if the third option, a lot of times, is just going to be taken off of the quarterback if you have a fast quarterback. So that's really going to be the three reads. Next up, we got the PA shot seams. The setup is always going to be the same for this play. I'm going to motion this guy out, put the A route on a streak, and then I'm going to put the RB route on an out route uh, and the X route on a streak. This is going to be the look against cover two. We really have a lot of different options. I mean, the A route's an option, the, the B route's an option. Uh, every route's an option against cover two. I'll go ahead and I'll show all of them. I don't really need the running back doing anything at this point, but like right here, I'm going to go for the Y route, who's going to be a really good, a really good play. As you can see, if I bullet and pass lead away from the safety, he can be a one play touchdown. I'm going to have to move the ball or flip the play for the next one, uh, but the, the motion route that I'm motioning out is also a very good cover two play. If I want to use the B route as a cover two beater, the RB route on a route is important. You'll see how um, once this B route gets past the cornerback on bullet, pass leading up the field, he can be a one play touchdown. Although once again, some sort of weird catch animation. I really get a good catch and run. Uh, but you can see how all these routes, I'll do this one more time before I move on to the next defense. You can see how all these routes are very successful routes. Uh, as we got the A route once again, like I said, I could force that. I like going outside here though. If I'm going to go, if I'm going to attack cover two, I like to be as far away from the user as possible. And typically, the outside receivers are there. This play also has a lot of success against cover two man. All the same routes from this setup will beat man coverage the same way. I don't really need to change anything as, that, as far as that's regard. But the Y route's still going to be the best one as long as I can, um, you know, get some time. That was not a clean pocket. The the B route will be the same way. I'm going to move the ball over. 
We'll focus on either side here. This B route, once the cornerback comes down to jam, the B route will typically run around it. The A route's wide open too, by the way. Uh, we just need a good throw. As you can see, drops it over the bucket there. You can easily beat that for a one-play touchdown as well. And then I'll go ahead and I'll just focus on this tight end one time because the tight end you can see is really just getting a free release inside and really just being a very easy play. Although there, I think Buda Baker jumped it. But uh, you can see if I would have took my time, let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's take our time a little bit, make this play. Like I said, the A route's not even really getting jammed. And, you know, we can just bullet and pass lead inside and have a big play. If you have a really fast tight end, you could probably catch a one-play touchdown up the middle with that as well. Against cover three, this play is not as good, but I have a really good cover three one-play touchdown in this. So let's go and let's move this ball back to the original spot. You can have a one-play touchdown against cover three with this particular play. The wire out, for whatever reason, can get past this cornerback, but you can see it's a very tight window. So even though he does get past the cover three cornerback, it's not the biggest opening. And, I mean, I don't even have my fast guy there. If I had uh, Watkins running that, it'd be even easier. But you can see it is a one-play touchdown against cover three. So if you're good at reading a defense, this is the best way to do it. Put this guy on a comeback. I would also streak the A route one more time. You're going to see how this Y route really just runs to a field of flowers as there's nothing out here. So this is the easiest way to hit a one-play touchdown against cover three with this particular play. Against cover one hole, same thing. When it comes to cover one hole, the only route that really is going to beat anything here is going to be the Y route or the speed out route, which is still pretty much there. I find it's best if it's cover one not to streak the X route because then they kind of get in each other's way. You can see um, you can have success just running this play against cover one as is in the X route there. Like I said, that's a, that's a check down that I can take for a big play as well as both routes on the left side are cover one hole beaters. Now, cover four, we're going to get cover four quarters. When it comes to cover four, don't motion out any of the routes. Just leave the B route in. And for some reason, the X route is now the route. It used to be the Y route, but I feel like they patched it specifically because of my setup. And then last but not least, we have regular cover four, which it beats also. Against cover four, if you have a fast enough receiver, you don't really need anything. To, you don't really need to do anything. But it's best to motion this guy out and put him on a comeback route. That's all you really have to do. Now you're going to see the Y route here once again will get outside of this cornerback. Although I don't know if I'm going to get the type of throw that I want. Although we did get the, we did make the play. This play here, um, it does a good job of getting over the top. But I probably would want to have my fastest receiver in the Y spot if I really want to get a touchdown. We might get one anyway. But you can see, I mean, there's definitely an opportunity there against cover four. Next up, we got the Saints spot. It's another play you could really run uh, just about any against any defense. If I put this B route on a streak, the A route's a very good man beater. So whether it's man or zone, I should have success here. Although ultimately, I don't really want my tight end running any route of significance. So I could easily do that exact same thing on the other side. Uh, although ultimately, both sides are good. The, they're, they're both going to beat man or zone. If I do decide to do it on this side, though, as you can see, we have another man coverage and we beat it again. Uh, it's really best to put a drag underneath, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I'm going to run it to the uh, to the Y side. I just got to put the B route on a drag. It's really that simple. I just want to have something as a check down and as a route spike right there. We get a we get instant pressure. You can have a cover three one play touchdown too if you motion this guy out, put him on a streak, and then put the X route on a streak. You probably want to block my running back, although that is my check down, so it's something that I got to think about. But the X route here can really be a big play, as you can see, as it goes up the seam. Might not be a one play touchdown all the time, but if I have more speed, it might be. Next up, we have the Y out halfback swing. Against cover two zone, just put the A route on a streak, and this is a very easy one play touchdown to the B route. All you have to do is get a little bit of time. You can see it's all timing. Bomb it up right through this, the two safeties, just bullet and pass lead deep. Cover two man's a little bit different as you're gonna want to put this X route on a 10 yard out route. Drag the uh, the R the Y route, or you can just put him on a zig. It doesn't really matter. But at the end of the day, it's pretty much going to be the same setup on the other side. Streak the A route. Now your B route is going to be the play once again. As you can see, it gets right over the middle, over the top for another easy one play touchdown. Next up against cover three sky. Against cover three, we're not really going to attack that crosser. We can. We'll probably do that in another setup soon. But ultimately, this is probably my best setup. Promotioning out the B route. 
streaking the streaking everybody but the Y route and blocking the running back. And you'll see how eventually this X route here, once the cornerback bites, will be open up the seam for a potential one-play touchdown. If I'm my fastest guy there, he probably could be gone. You can also get that crosser down the field open if you motion this uh, this X route out. Put the Y route on a drag, put the A route on a streak, and then put the X route on a curl. Come back, my bad, come back. And then you'll see how the B route here can have a lot of success crossing the cover three one play touchdown as well. Against cover one hole, the Y route's a really good play. The A route's a really good play. You have a lot of really good man beaters on this play. Except we have the dagger. This play here, all I gotta do is put the A route on a streak, put the Y route on a drag. Can motion across uh, Smith here and put him on slant. And the running back's actually fine. I can leave him doing what he's doing. The the drag gets open to 5 to 0. The crossing route gets open to 20 to 25. And the X route slant gets open about 10 to 15. So I pretty much have anything regardless of how my zone drop opponents like to set zone drops. Uh, the running back is a really good check down too. The check and release, not a lot of people really check that. The running back's a really good route, but there's a lot of good routes in this place. So it looks like we have a man coverage because we have somebody following here. That's going to really, I mean, all these routes be man and zone. That's part of the, the really good part about it, except for the running back. That's one time where you're not going to see the running back work. There, though, I tried to catch and run and didn't quite work out. Almost, I mean, I caught the ball still, though, which is the most important part. But like I said, everything here beats uh, man and zone, so I really don't have any concerns. I'm just going to work my way from front to back. Running back to drag to crosser, and if that's not there, I have that slant option as a uh, as pretty much like an emergency option. So there we go. Once again, crossing route will be open, although I got a bad throw. You can see he was beating his coverage. Drag route was open, too. I probably could have took that a lot easier, but I was going for the bigger play. But this is a very good play against any type of defense. Next up, we got the read option. This play here, just going to watch this read defender. If he crashes in on the handoff like he does here, just keep with the quarterback, try to run wide. If he doesn't, if he drops back, you're going to run it with the running back by holding A, which hopefully they'll get that look. Here he drops back again, like I said, just clears this entire space, especially against man coverage. You can see that was a man coverage, and everybody was chasing the receiver. So a very good play against man coverage especially. So I'm waiting for a, a look like right here. That looked like a blitz. Yeah, everybody I actually kept going because there was nothing outside. He was actually that was another man zero blitz where they were chasing the running back. You can see how this can be really dynamic. Um, and then I'll probably want to safe slide every once in a while with the quarterback. I don't necessarily want to take this much punishment. Still waiting for a look where he where the where the guy doesn't. Um, I'm, I'm still waiting for the for the defender to uh, to drop back so I can hand off to the running back. Like right there, boom, drops back, hand it off inside, get what you can. The inside run is probably not the best unless it's cover two or cover three man. Um, but at the end, I'm sorry, cover two or cover cover two man or zone. But at the end of the day, that's going to be the best read if the defender drops back. Next up, out of the tray wide flex, we have the inside zone. It's just the best run play in the formation. Once again, I mean, you're going to get a lot of opportunities, whether it's man or zone. The receiver typically takes out the linebacker. If the, like right here, he's spread out wide because he's probably a man coverage over that guy. That basically gives me a lane. If he's in the lane, a lot of times the receiver will come in and take him out of the play. Right here, though, this is not really the best look because there's probably not anybody that's going to really pick up on that. That would not be a good look. But it's really a one-on-one. -on -one. You really just want to make sure that wherever that linebacker is, that that receiver has has a clear path to him. That's really what's going to create your running space. So here you see he's out over the receiver. That'll give me an option, and I, uh, you know, just a nice big hole. And if he's in the hole, a lot of times the receiver will come out and basically take him out of the play. Next up, we have the PA crossers. So this player here, I want to do is motion this guy out, put him on a. 10 yard out route, put the B route here on a fade. That's all I really got to do. Cancel the play action. The Y route is going to be the play. Just can't let him get too far across the field. You can see he's going for a one play touchdown. That was actually a little bit too far, but once he gets to the center, I pretty much bullet and pass lead up. Also, has success against cover two man. I don't really think you have to put the put Goddard on a speed. Or you can probably leave him on the speed out because it's about the same 10 yard route. But we got to put him out, move motion him out there. You see here, the, the B route gets open right over the middle once again. Might not be a one-play touchdown against cover two man, but it's definitely going to be a big play. Then against cover three, against cover three, you got to make that motion, but you got to put him on a comeback route. Then you're going to put the B route on, on a, not a, a streak or a fade. It doesn't really matter. But the Y route, once again, will be the read once he gets across the safety there. And you can see I don't get a good throw, but he definitely has his space. 
Against cover three, you got to make that same motion, but you got to put them on a comeback route or, a, you know, whatever. Then put the B route on a fade, and you should have a very good cover three one play touchdown. Once the, the this route here gets across, once again, the Y route, you can see he was very wide open as the cover three cornerback is covering the actual uh, comeback route. Same setup works against cover four. We'll go ahead and we'll pick cover four. And it's going to work the same way. Typically, cover four, you have to run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field. But we'll go ahead and we'll try this one time. It's just so it doesn't take as long to cross the field. But you can see it still worked from this side. But from the hash mark to the short side of the field, it might work even better. Except we got man cover one. This year, just put the B route on a fade. It's all you really got to do. The Y route's going to get open uh, for an easy one play touchdown. You can put the tight end on a drag or any number of things. But you can see this is a very easy one play touchdown against cover one as well. Next up, we have the RPO alert screen. The A route's a man beater. For cover three, you really just want to throw it over here. You got good blocking. You'll get a good catch and run. Just have your fastest receiver in that spot if you're going to run this. If you have a lot of holes in the middle of the field, though, just hand it off. I mean, if you have a lane, it's best to just take that lane. But cover three or cover four, you want to throw it to the X route. Next up, we have the shock H option. This play here, I'm just going to motion across the X route, which is something I'll do quite a bit. Uh, and then I'll put the B route here on a streak. I can put the A route on a streak, the X route on a drag, or the A route on a drag, and, and the X route on a slant. It doesn't really matter, but ultimately motioning that guy across is really what makes the most important part of this play. And then you can see this guy here is just angling away from where the uh, the cornerback and the safety are going to be able to cover. Didn't get a very good pass there, which isn't necessarily a surprise. This is kind of how Jalen Hurts does, but let's do that one more time. So it's kind of my fault. Maybe I didn't really throw it on timing. You can see right there. I can throw it a lot earlier and get a good catch and run because ultimately, you know, you got to account for the sidelines. Best of runs from the hash mark to the open side of the field, too. Also has a lot of success against cover two man. Same setup. Get all of our check downs in order. And you can see the wire out there. He's already got outside leverage. He's going to just blow right past this guy. And we could get another very big catch and run. A possible one play touchdown if you get a good enough catch and run. Can have success against cover three as well. Same setup. Although this time you want to have the A route on a streak. Maybe even the X route on a streak. You can pretty much streak everybody on this play. Because I'm just trying to basically get this, uh, split this field. And now you can see it's just basically a, a, a nice seam beating play to the cover three. Ready, ready. If I put him on a fade, it's a little bit better. If everybody else is on a streak, but the B route on a fade will get him a little bit more, um, you know, leading room away from that safety. So that's probably a little bit better than the streak. Next up, we got the verticals. Go pick cover one. B route beats cover one very easily. Once he makes that second break, just bullet and pass it away. Make sure you get a little bit of a better uh, pass than I just threw. You can block the running back. I don't find it's really necessary though because the pass rush doesn't really get home. And I don't know why I'm slightly out throwing my guy, but you can see he is getting separation. So let's block the running back. Maybe I'll be a little bit less worried about getting the ball out on time. As you can see here, we finally get that completion. Like I said, when he makes that second break, he's just wide open against cover one. Next up, we have the halfback counter. This play here, it's just a good counter run. A lot of run plays in uh, formations like this only go in one direction. So it's good to have a run that can go in the opposite direction. As you can see right there, I really had to sprint outside to make it do. But uh, you can also go right up the middle. It really just depends on you know what you're seeing in front of you. It's a good run play. It's just something that... Um, is good at keeping your opponent, you know, fr from just expecting inside zones all the time as this can have success in a different direction than what is typical. But like this formation here, I'd switch over to the quick base because obviously there's multiple defenders here and I'm just setting myself up to fail to try to run into that. So if your opponent's shifting all of their men towards the more probable inside zone type runs, take it outside and go the opposite direction for a very big carry. As you can see, the biggest runs I had was sprinting completely away from 
from the inside all the way out and around any uh, you know defenders right in front of me. Next up, we have the inside zone. Just your best run play in this formation, as it'll typically the receivers will spread the uh, or the linebackers apart enough that you can have a big play. Like right here, they're covering. He's covering Pascal, so it's just a big lane, and I should be able to you know, take that advantage to get a pretty relatively consistent run play from this. Next up, we have the RPO zone alert bubble. It's a good inside run, especially against like cover two, uh, man in zone because the safety drop back. But you really just want to watch the receiver and the, really want to watch the cornerback in front of the receiver because that's really going to dictate what you do. If he follows, you have to hand it off no matter what because otherwise you're probably going to throw a pick six. So I'm really just going to watch the B route. If he follows like he has on the first two plays, I'm just going to take what I can on the run. I'm getting a pretty good run. I'm getting about five yards. But at the end of the day, I really would like to throw to this guy as you can see here there's much more space outside i mean they're both good as there i get closer to 10 but at the end of the day there's plenty of opportunity to this guy there's nobody even in front of him here so that's going to be an even easier read if there's no cornerback there i mean you can definitely take that but that might have been a man blitz zero where the safety was responsible it's really hard to tell here's another play like i said he doesn't react i'll take it outside it's really up to you where you want to go but uh, it's a good run play there's opportunity in two different directions next up we get the halfback base just your best traditional inside run since a lot of these runs are exotic into the outside it's good to have an inside run nothing really to go over other than the fact that this will probably be best against cover two man and zone you can see i'm actually reversing field quite a bit it's working out pretty good next up we got the inside zone it's just the best inside run from this formation you can make a lot of like fake motions and stuff to kind of mirror some of the pass plays my favorite fake motion would probably just be to motion this receiver in it can help a little bit as far as the blocking sometimes he'll try to get on to like a linebacker or something like that but it's just the best inside run. There's not a lot of great run plays in this formation. It's mostly a passing formation. Next up, we got the PA post dig shot. I'm going to start off against Tampa 2. Against Tampa 2, let's motion in this route here. Put the B route on a 10-yard out route. And that's all we got to do. Cancel the play action really is up to you. But the X route here is going to get gone once he gets inside the free safety. Although there, I don't know what happened. I got good accuracy, but I didn't get the catch. So I'll have to do that again. Like I said, motion this guy in just like the run play. Um, just to keep that consistent and we're going to see how this play here once again once this x route gets in there we're just basically bullet and pass leading up and away and i, I kind of stopped running to be honest with you that's when i get the touchdown i thought i had a touchdown but you can see it's a very easy one play touchdown against cover two against cover two man it's gonna be pretty similar but a little different same setup on this play only we're not going to motion in the x route we're just going to leave him where he is and we're going to basically use that and then once this guy crosses here, you can see we just have to buy a little time, but he's going to get inside of that safety uh, the same way with the bump. So this time, not motioning him in, he will cross that safety's face. And once he does, you just have to bullet and pass the inside at any point. I think I was probably still running at this point, but you can see. No, actually, I got that ball off. Yeah, I guess once he gets inside, you can basically bullet and pass it away. Against cover three, I'm going to make that motion one more time. This time, we're going to streak the, the running back, and then we're going to put the, uh, the B route here on that 10-yard I'm sorry, not a 10 route, on a comeback route this time. And this is going to basically create what we want it to be as the X route here is wide open again, although I was under pressure, so I got a bad throw. But you can see how that cornerback is held down by this comeback route. So let's go ahead and let's do that one more time. Like I said, I'm going to put this wire out here on a streak. Just had to buy a little bit of time. Like I said, I'll wait for him to, to get loose. And now you can see, even on the run, as I'm getting some good accuracy passes on the run, we're getting another one-play touchdown against cover three. On this play, you have to run from the hash mark to the short side of the field, motion in the X route, put the B route on a comeback route, and then you just have to buy time. Once Quez Watkins gets inside the free safety, just bullet, pass lead up, and you can see he gets past the uh, the strong safety for an easy one-play touchdown. Next up, out of the I-form slot, we have the stretch alert bubble. So whether you throw into the bubble screen or the stretch play, they're both going to be best against cover three and cover four because the cornerbacks drop back. If you're going to throw to the bubble screen, or if you're going to run the stretch, I mean, <laughs> it's best to motion this guy out because it makes the cornerback drop back. Here you can see it shifts alignment, but it just gives me a better opportunity to get to the edge. Although the tight end didn't really block that guy there. Next up, we have the halfback power G. This is really going to work best against cover three and cover four zones. 
This play here doesn't really require any adjustments. It's just a good, uh, it's kind of like a stretch replacement. And a lot of times, since the cornerbacks in cover three and cover four drop back, you'll get a good opportunity to the outside. You can always motion out this tight end as well. And a lot of times, the cornerback will drop back, giving you even more space. Because at the end of the day, that's the guy that you're really trying to attack anyway. You can see here he's much further back. And it just gives you more opportunity to get to the edge before he has an opportunity to come up and make a play. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. This play here, you can flip it. If your opponent is spreading or, or pinching or shifting too much to the side with the two tight ends, but it's typically going to be best to run just like this, especially against like cover three or cover four where the cornerbacks drop back. You can see you got a very overpowered run formation and you can have a lot of success running this play behind the two tight ends and the fullback. Next up, we got the PA boot flow. This is going to be best against like cover three, cover four zones. The tight end and the X route can really beat man coverage, but at the end of the day, this play is going to be best in the flats. You can motion out this fullback and give yourself a little bit of a head start. You typically want to put your fastest uh, running back um, at this spot, the fastest guy you can get here. But if you give him that little bit of motion, give him that little bit of a head start, you're going to notice he gets out in that flat that much quicker, and you can usually get a better catch and run animation than I did there. Like I said, it's always best to put your speeds through here, which I did not do. And you can see how, I mean, there's definitely opportunity in the flats if you have a faster guy there. I could get like a 91 speed running back there. I'd be way more productive. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. Halfback stretch, once again, I find it's best to flip it and run in the opposite direction. You can motion across either tight end or uh, the receiver. Uh, you can see here, though, it does change the formation, but I still feel it's best to probably have that extra blocker. As you can see, it basically just picked everything up and just blew open some holes. You could do without the motion, though. You just want to make sure you don't have a defender like this super wide to the outside. You're never going to get outside of that. In a scenario like this, it's best to just run it the way that it is. And now you can see you can have a lot of success, um, you know, just running it as is. So it's really a really simple read. You're really just trying to see, you know, do I have that edge? Like right here, I don't really need the motion across a blocker at all because I really do have a pretty good shot at getting that. That angle getting that edge although I didn't get it that's the type of look that I'm talking about next up we got the inside zone this play here it's probably best to flip and run opposite the the receiver tight end as you can see a bunch of defenders are bunched up over there it's probably best to run it to the shallow side it's just a good inside run at the end of the day it's not an explosive run regardless to either direction I just find it makes the most sense to try to run away away from the most of the defenders as you can see on the next play we get a very big play because of that you can run it in the direction of the extra blocking but to me it's best to run it away from the extra defenders here's an opportunity for the slightly bigger hole to run it in that direction again and you can see we get a very big uh, very big hole so very good inside run has explosive capabilities depending on what you're looking at on defense next up we got the pa cross this play really works against any defense all you have to do is put the x route on the street you can motion them in to try to get these crossing receivers open a little bit faster but at the end of the day all you really want to do is pull back any outside zone so you can get these uh these underneath routes open below it you're really just going to work front to back a route to b route the a route should be there all the time unless it's like a hard flat like right here and then the b route you can see is is just a deep crosser that typically will beat uh, most zones, most man, just about anything. Both routes really should beat man or zone depending on what you're looking at. Next up, we have the PA sale. Start off with Tampa 2. All you have to do is put the X route here on a 10 yard out route against cover 2 zone, and the B route here will have a very big opening right up the middle just as long as you time that pretty well. I don't know if I'll get a one play touchdown, but you can see the opportunities there, especially if you have a little bit more speed than Smith has at 91. Against cover two man, just put the X route on a 10 yard out route and you'll have the exact same opportunity just as long as the B route doesn't get bumped too much. You can see he gets right up the middle there for a big play. Uh, but he got bumped around quite a bit. You need, might need a stronger receiver. So here, here he gets off pretty clean. You can see we get a much better uh, look. And we're getting a very easy one play touchdown because he didn't get bumped around too much by the defender. Against cover three, against cover three, you just gotta put the X route on a comeback and the A route on a streak. That's gonna be the really only difference. Play action to me is critical. And you can see how, once again, that comeback route pulls that cornerback down to the point where you just have to wait for the receiver to cross the free safety's face. Bullet pass lead away, get a very big play. Same thing can be said about cover four. We're gonna pick cover four drop. Just put the X route on a comeback route and then the A route on a streak. That's all you really have to do. If you motion in this comeback route, it is helpful as it will pull the uh, the safety down so that this guy can get over the top, making it a very easy one play touchdown. But you do need a pretty fast receiver to do this against cover four. Next up out of the I form Z close, we have the wide receiver curl. 
This is specifically a man-beating play. It's going to work best if you run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field. And, uh, you know, basically I'm going to be throwing to the B route. I mean, that's really the look. Once he gets outside, it's a speed-out route. It's going to get open against pretty much any man coverage. It doesn't really matter, especially if you throw with timing. The X route on the other side, I mean, you can put it on a slant. You can put it on a drag. You can put it on anything you want. I don't really find that that's uh, going to be too... You know, a drag probably get open just about anything. So the B route would be the read. The A route's also a pretty good man beater if he gets across the middle with a little less contact. But at the end of the day, this is, if you're calling this play, it's really because you wanted that man beating speed out route that Six is running. Next up, we have the cross drag. This play doesn't really need any adjustments. The tight end can be a good route coming out the backside there, but you can see that all the crossing routes will pretty much get open. You're just kind of reading from front to back. You're going to read from the B route to the Y route, and then your last read. Uh, with, like I said, if the tight end's there, though, a lot of times that's my first read because he's going against the grain, typically clearing the zones. So that's definitely a good route. So I don't want to lose the A route, but you can put him on a streak so that you can um, have you know somebody pulling back the coverage for the crossing routes, which can help against zone, especially even though that was a man coverage. But that is an option. Next up, we have the quick pitch. It's a good run play. Sometimes I'd like to motion this guy out just to pull the defender out a little bit, uh, spread the defense out a little bit. That's really the only option that you would really need to use. Um, this is not one of my favorite run plays. I might not have a ton of success running this, but it's a pro favorite run play uh, because a lot of people like to run these bunch sets. I don't really run a ton of bunch sets personally, um, but you can see it's one of the better outside runs you can have from this formation. Next up we have the Seattle. Typically, I'm just going to put the X route on a drag and motion out the B route. This is going to be the best play. Against cover two man, you can put the RB route on a streak. I'm sorry, against cover two, not cover two man. Against cover two zone, that will give you a much better option when it comes to throwing to this B route over the top because essentially the streak is going to pull the safety in and the, and the drag will pull the, or pull the cornerback down eventually. I mean, you could really do a couple different things here. If I wanted to work that route a little bit quicker i could do the exact same setup and just basically put the rb route on like an out route i could do something like this to give myself a much quicker result when it comes to pulling that cornerback down because that felt like i was waiting a little while and if i do that you can see i get a very easy one play touchdown as i get a big catch and run but i find the first setup probably gives you the most options against cover two man coverage we'll do that again pretty much going to be the same thing only this time you don't really have to do anything you just put one of these guys on a streak i mean the rb route here i can put like a drag or something like that this here is going to be a much better check down and then you'll see how this cornerback here the receiver really just runs around him it's a pressing formation but based off the fact that he takes such a wide looping angle i'll go to the replay whenever it comes up rather i'll go to the replay to show you guys that essentially it just doesn't get pressed so here we go one more time like i said he tries to put hands on him but he just runs around him and that's what you're going to get pretty much every single time as he beats him to the corner next up we have the z spot okay ready it's so another play that really works against just about anything. You just have to put the B route on a streak. And all I'm really going to do is read the A route to the RB route. Um, I can really put this other guy here on like a slant or something like that. Whatever type of check down I want. But if the RB route's open, I'll take it right away. I mean, that's a man coverage, but he's leading out. I'll take that get a nice catch and run. No questions asked. That should be just about any man or zone depending on the alignment pre-snap. But it's really more of a zone beating uh, concept. As you can see right here, that looked like a man. He actually got out in front of it. Didn't quite get, uh, you know, that, that's not typically what I want to throw it against. I don't typically want to throw it against man. Only if I get the head start will I want to do that. Now a lot of times it can happen if they're like running into people. Like here we get that that once again. Looks like it might have been a hard flat because he did react pretty quickly. But like I said, I'm starting by looking at that guy. Typically this concept works best against cover two zone though because the A route shoots right for that uh, spacing. So you can see right there, very easy play. You can easily get a one play touchdown if you have a fast enough tight end like Darren Waller or something like that. For the single back bunch, we have the Z option. And then on the defensive side, we're going to go with cover zero once again. When it comes to this play, a lot of bunch and tight formations can really give uh, man coverage problems. So all we're going to do here is put the A route on a curl 
which is down on the right, down the left stick or down the right stick. I'm not even really sure. Yeah, it's down the left stick. And you'll see how this B option route here can really get open for some glitchy gains. I mean, it's just the fact that he runs around the curl route that really makes that route get wide open. We'll go to the replay here. And you can see it's the it's the curl route that really sets the pick. And he's just totally out of position. I mean, 21, for whatever reason, just doesn't know how to get around that. And we get a very easy one-play touchdown and a very quick throw. So we'll do that one more time. And you can see how, you know, it doesn't even really matter where the defender is. He just doesn't get around that curl. Uh, if you don't put that route on a curl, it doesn't have the same effect. I'll go ahead and I'll show you how this route runs without that curl there. And you can see he's pretty much locked up. So it really has more to do with the curl route than it does the actual route itself. Next up, we have the bench. This play here, uh, there's a really good man beating route on both the X and the B route. This looks like a man based on the fact that these cornerbacks are in so far. So if you throw in the break, you can have some very good success against man coverage. The best setup for a play like this, though, is pick a side put one of the tight ends on a streak and then put the other tight end on a drag. It really doesn't matter which direction you go, but I do feel like the B route is probably the best against man. The best against zone is probably going to be the X route, which is a slightly different look. We have a zone coverage here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll block my running back, although that's fine. You can leave him in that. That's fine. That's a good play as well. That was a cover three. You can see if it's a cover three, the streak's going to be the, we're going to be the read. Typically, that's not meant to do anything more than just pull coverage back, but on this particular play, if it's a cover three, he'll be the read. If it's a cover two or any man coverage or anything like that like this here we have a man coverage so i'm not even gonna mess around i'm just gonna go ahead and throw it up to Devonte smith although he didn't really beat that coverage too well uh you can see how that's a very good man beating uh but i don't know why they keep bringing all these safeties down that's why i kind of forced that the a route though is a very good check down you can see here we get a man coverage once again i didn't feel like waiting for the deeper route to develop so i just take the man coverage so it's really that simple if you get a cover two though, which I haven't really gotten, that's gonna be a play where you read the A route versus the X route. I don't know, it looks like I have a cover three here. Like I said, I can get that X route, even against cover three, you can see that beats that outside. I don't think that was a man coverage. That's just a very good uh, corner route for pretty much any man or zone. Let's go and do it one more time. I'm hoping to get a cover two here. Let's see if we get that outside route again, and we're just basically you know lobbing it up and, and making a very good play. I had to manually select a cover two just so I could get that look. But you'll see how the X route here just splits the safety in the cornerback uh, once the drag gets across the field. But wow, really, that route, that X route really beats anything. Next up, we get the halfback stretch. So another play, you can really go in either direction with the right stick. It's going to give you a lot of success. If you want to bring an additional blocker, but at the same time kind of give away what direction you're going, you can motion across one of these tight ends. You can see it also brings a defender with it. So this is not necessarily my preferred way, but sometimes it's better to have additional blocking. As you can see right there, we had a pretty good run. I like to run it as is. I like to mix in this motion because I do have a lot of plays where I motion out this uh, this, rece or this receiver. A lot of one-play touchdowns. Uh, typically, though, if I'm going to do that, I want to motion it away from the run play because I want my opponent to think that's the direction I'm going. And then this is going to be a much better angle that will catch my opponent off guard and make it a lot easier to run. Next up, we got the halfback wham. This is just a good run in Madden. It's been that way for a long time. You can flip the play with the right stick, although realistically you have to flip it by flipping the entire play. So I did flip the play here, you can see, because I definitely have a bigger hole in this direction. And this is essentially going to act like a trap play where we can get a lot of success, just as long as we're aiming towards whatever hole we see. Now here we don't have a hole at all, but this will still work. You'll still see that this can blow open some uh, some creative space as long as that first block gets a piece of the defender like he did there. So ultimately, while you know my only real suggestion would be to run this play away from any extra box safeties, like we have a box safety on the left side there. Here we're just going to go out, we're going to run in this direction again, and we should have success. Because like I said, it typically will create a hole, though there I didn't really go through it very well. But at the end of the day, this is a very good run. Here we go, we'll flip the play one more time. We have a hole on the one side, and you'll see how this will create uh, some very sustainable run lanes to run through throughout uh, the entire game. Next up, out of the deuce close, we have the halfback zone week. This play here is really going to be best against anything except for cover four quarters or cover four drop because in those defenses, the safeties typically play up. That might have been a cover four, and I still had success there. That was about a six-yard run. 
here we have a cover three safety in the box on the other side so i'm going to take it outside away from that and like i said you can run this wide as well uh, even though it does kind of angle towards an inside run if they don't go outside you can really take it outside for big runs next up we got the pa boot slide it's another play where i'm just going to put the a route on a streak uh, and block my running back this is pretty much all i got to do the a route's going to pull everything back and then i'm pretty much just going to play the crosser which here is going to be my check down as well as my man beater then i'm going to play the, the the corner receiver and the running back which is pretty much going to be all my reads i don't really make a read with the a route but at the end of the day here uh when i meant running back what i meant to say was uh the the crossing y route that's typically like a running back's route but it's actually a tight end so i could see there that was his zone coverage and we really just played the high low routes across one another as you can see right here man that's a man coverage i could just basically that's all i could do i mean i was under pressure right away next up out of the single back deuce close we have the pa x post cross Against cover two, all you have to do is put the B route on an out route and then smart route at about 10 yards. It's going to be best to motion this guy out, um, and this will be uh, the best way to score a one-play touchdown with the X route, who typically will go right up the center because the safety you can see kind of lags off towards the out route. This is cover two zone. You don't have to make the motion with the B route, and you don't need the running back. So you can just put him on a 10-yard out route, and the X route you will, will get going. Just bullet and pass lead up and away. As you can see, it's a very easy one-play touchdown against cover two zone. Against cover two, man has similar effect. All you have to do is put that B route on a 10-yard out route one more time. I guess I'll block my running back because I don't really need that. And you'll see you'll get the same effect from the safety just as long as this receiver gets past his, his cornerback. You can have an easy one-play touchdown once again. Next up against cover three. Against cover three, you're gonna have to motion out the B route so that you can change the route to a comeback route. You can't do that from inside. Then you're gonna put the Y route on a streak, block your running back, and this is pretty much gonna be the play right here. You're gonna see how the X route will get across the safety eventually, and the cornerback is nowhere to be found because he stayed home on that comeback route. Go ahead and I'll do that again because I don't feel like I timed it very well when it comes to the crossing route. So you'll see right here, it's that crossing route does get past the safety and we're getting another easy one play touchdown. Even with Buda Baker, superstar in coverage. Against cover four, that's regular cover four. Uh, just make that same motion with the B route like you would cover three, put them on a comeback route. Put the Y route on a streak and you're going to pretty much have the play right here. You're just going to have to wait until this uh, X route crosses this last safety. And then you can see how you can get it out over the cornerback who's still biting on the comeback route. So we're going to do that one more time. Block my running back. I don't know if I said that. I should have slid my double team one more time, but that's fine. And then you can see here, because it's only typically a three-man rush on cover four, you can get an easy one-play touchdown over the top. against cover three match we're just going to motion out the uh the b route again and basically just do the exact same thing although here you'll see how the cover four corner i'm sorry the cover four quarters coverage will get beat by the exact same route next up we have the bench switch so basically the setup is going to be the same but you can do it to either side the right side works better against zone the left side works better against man and it's all because of what the b route and the x route are doing if you look at the two routes they are different the x route is a better man coverage beating route or the b route is a better zone coverage beating route so here it looks like a zone because the cornerbacks are so far off it's not a man coverage so i'm going to streak the a route put the y route on a drag and you're going to see how the b route here will get open over the top of what i pretty much figured was a cover two zone and it was if it's a man coverage, they'll be a little bit tighter line, but you can really do that trick to either side. It really doesn't matter. I can streak the Y route and put the A route on the exact same play. I can say right here, you can see how this X route is going to get outside of it. I don't know if they've caught in bounds. This is a really good zone coverage concept. It really works against any man or zone. These outside receivers really can have success. You can see right there, we're getting in front of it. That looked like it might have been a man coverage. I'm not really sure, but you can really run this to either side. It really doesn't matter. And it'll have success against just about any man or zone in the game. Next up, we have the halfback zone weak. 
is the best inside run on the formation, but it does have the ability to really bounce it outside if you want to. Uh, it's definitely a good inside run, though. It'll be best against cover two, cover three, uh, anything like that. Um, that's typically going to be your best look. Right here, we have an extra defender in the box. I'm going to flip it with the right stick to the other direction, and we're going to have another good run, as this is a very successful run series. Next up, we have the jet sweep. These type of plays typically work best against man coverage, but you can have success against zone as well. This is just an opportunity to get your fastest guy the football. As you can see right there, that was definitely zone coverage. They really have the most success. I'm going against random here, but any man coverage, like right here, this looks like a man or maybe even a cover four, should have success like this. And you can see, boom, we're getting outside of that. Typically, it works best against man because when the guy motions across, the man defender doesn't follow, where typically he would. If it wasn't a run play, he would follow, so there wouldn't be an advantage. That way, you always get this advantage here. Next up, we have the PA post dig. So I'm going to start off with cover two. You really just want to put the X route on a 10 yard out route and the A route on a streak. You can motion him out, but it's not 100% necessary. It will create more space though. So at the end of the day, it's best to do that. The B route here, once he gets inside, the safety is going by a mile. And you can see how this is a very easy one play touchdown against cover two. Next up, we'll pick cover two man. Pretty much going to be the exact same setup as we'll just basically wait for the B route to get inside once again. As it looks like the jam probably missed by a mile. And then I didn't quite get the catch and one run that I wanted, but you can see how that could be a very easy one play touchdown against cover two man as well. Next up, we'll pick cover three, cover three sky. This play here is gonna be pretty much the same setup. Just motion this guy, put him on a comeback route, put the A route on the streak one more time, cancel the play action. And they really just have to buy time in the pocket for the B route here to cross. And then you can see how that gets open for a one play touchdown against cover three. You can do a different setup as well. This setup here is just pretty much motioning this guy out putting him on a comeback route and then motioning him back. Put the A, put the Y route on a fade, the A route on a streak, and then the B route on a streak and motion him out to pull the safety in that direction. And the Y route's gonna be a big play. So let's go and let's do this one more time. This one here to me can be a much quicker one play touchdown than the other one. So that like pass pro isn't much as much of an issue, but the extra setup will be a little bit of a tell for your opponent. So that's something you can't do too often, but you can see it's a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up we'll do cover one. This time I'm going to motion this guy across and put him on a curl route and put the A route on a streak. So this is pretty much going to be the play. A lot of times these guys being so close will bump each other around and give the uh, the B route more separation than he might have got by himself. As you can see, we can get across the cover one formation for a big play. Although I didn't get a very good pass. Like I think I was under pressure, but you can see how that works out. Go ahead and let's watch the replay to see what happens here with all these extra guys bumping around. You can see it's just, they just don't get the same coverage. It's the 21 and 7 are so close to each other, just kind of bumping each other off. And it just gives a big uh, advantage to the to the man coverage. So bunch of concepts, especially when it comes to curls, are very good when it comes to man coverage. Next up, we'll choose cover four quarters. So I'm just going to motion this guy out, put him on a comeback route, put the air out on a streak. And this is pretty much going to be the play, similar set to cover three. As you can see, this guy is going to get right over the top for a big play. A little bit of a fast receiver, and it would have been even easier. But you can see how you can drop that in with an average receiver. I mean, above average receiver in Devontae Smith as far as speed. Next up, we have the drive Y corner. So another play, I'm just going to choose random. You want your best receiving tight end at the A spot, and you're just going to put the RB route on a, on a streak. Probably want to run this from the hash mark to the open side of the field because my first read is going to be uh, Goddard. Uh, but basically, if it's a man cover, just about every route on the field will get open. The Y route is probably the only route I don't need because man or zone, a lot of these routes are going to work the same way. So here we have that man coverage. Got a little bit of pressure there, but you can see that does get outside of pretty much any man coverage. And he's always going to be covered by a tight end i'm sorry a uh, safety which is going to make it easy then you have that underneath check down which is obviously going to be um you know very consistent unless the user drops on that next up we got the four verticals it's a very good cover two play against cover two you don't have to make any adjustments but you can motion out the x route for a better a bigger play i'm gonna go ahead and run it as is though you can see how um you know basically once he gets above the cornerback just bullet and pass it outside and you get a very big catch and run Probably could have threw to the B route as well. It seemed like he was definitely open over the middle, but he might be a little bit more contested. As you can see, the safety drops on him right away, but still a very big play. If I motion, if I streak these guys and I motion the B route, 
or the X route out, it might give away the play, but it'll make the play a little bit more effective. As you can see, he gets open right away, and I might be able to catch and run. So if I had a fast enough receiver where I got a good enough catch and run animation, that's probably a much easier one-play touchdown. You don't really have to put the X, the A route on the streak either. It's really just the B route that you're trying to, uh, you know, attack. So we're going to do that again. Like I said, he's gone. He's passed him a lot quicker, and, you know, it's just a much easier play if you motion him out, but it can give it away, and then your opponent could try to use it. Against cover three... This play can just be a good play, uh, you know, to, to go up the seams against cover three. It's not really going to be a one-play touchdown or anything like that. You can make that same motion to really open up that lane. But at the end of the day, you're really looking at the uh, the B route here or the um, or the tight end on the other side streaking. The running back is a really good check down against just about any defense man or zone. Next up, out of the single back wing flex close, we have the halfback stretch. It's a very good run play. Um, I really can't say whether it's best to run it behind the receivers or the tight ends. On this play right here, I just chose random defense. Because there's two defenders over there, it's probably a man coverage. If it's a man coverage, I'd say run it behind the two tight ends. If it's a zone coverage, I'd say run it behind the two receivers. You can see here once you know the, the tight end kicks out in that cornerback, I actually ran into my, my blocker outside of that bigger run. But that's going to be the easiest way to choose. If I want to, I could always motion across one of these tight ends and give myself like a bunch look. But you can see once again, if it's a man coverage special, it'll bring somebody over. So it's really your choice. But a lot of times it can still be beneficial. As you can see, we still get the edge and get a nice carry. So it's really all about like right here. We have two defenders right in the box. This would be a scenario where I definitely would say might as well take the disadvantage. Or it didn't even create a disadvantage. It created an advantage because nobody followed. So we're going to go. We're going to do that. You can see that we can have a lot of success with this play. Uh, it's one of the most consistent. It's probably the most consistent run play in this formation. Next up, we have the halfback zone weak. So this play, once again, you can motion over the tight end if you want to. I don't find it's necessary. If you have a gap over the guard, I typically find it's just a good inside run. Could also flip it if the advantage is on the other side. I find that that might actually work better because of the two tight ends. Uh, might handle the defensive front a little bit better. So you can really run in either direction. Because I noticed that in previous years, this guard would do a better job of picking up this defensive uh, or this this linebacker, which there he did do. But it feels a bit spotty. So at the end of the day, it might be best just to flip it and give yourself a blocking advantage where there's two tight ends. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, this this formation is all about the stretch run. This is just a good inside run to counter that. Next up, we have the jet sweep. This play is going to be best against cover threes. Once again, where the cornerbacks play off, or you know, man coverage is especially. I'll typically run this. That was look like a cover four quarters, which is a pretty good run defense. But if it's a man coverage, a lot of times, um, you know, there won't be anybody on this other side here. I don't even know what this is, but you can see it's a very successful run play. Probably the second best run play in the formation at this point. So we'll do that again. I said, I don't know if we're going to get any uh, any actual man coverages. You just want to make sure you have your fastest receiver at this spot, which uh, I probably would have Quez Watkins here instead. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. It's going to be best. It's going to be best against cover three and cover four because the cornerbacks drop back. But to be honest with you, this two tight end set over here really does a good job blocking against just about any formation. You typically want to run to the open side of the field. I'm running to the short side. So let's go. Let's move the ball over. You can flip this play and run to the short side as well. Typically, if your your opponent is like over committed to this side with like shifts and stuff like that, you can flip it and have success. But this is definitely one of the best run plays in the formation. It's one of the best run plays in the entire game because you still have uh, some really good, you know, you, have, you just have a lot of really good options here. As you can see, it's a very consistent run. I'm not even reading the coverage. I have no idea what defense I'm running it against, but it's very consistent. So, like I said, if you do get in a situation where it's over committed to that side, you can flip it and run a short side. I don't really find that that's going to make sense against the computer because they're not making that type of shift. But if your opponent does shift to the double tight end or you have a look like this where there's a lot of people waiting you can go the other way and typically have success just as long as your your left tackle holds that block down a little bit better next up we got the pa boot left tackle this play once again you have a good man beater in the a route and then you have the comeback route which is going to be your check down we're really going to try to throw the tight end every single time we call this play next up out of the wing pair we have the halfback inside zone Let's go now. this is your inside run uh, whether you want to flip it, because here we have a much bigger uh, hole to the right side, or you just want to run it to the left, because typically this formation will pull everybody um, in one direction. You can see right here, even that that uh, cornerback, or that I'm not sure if it's a cornerback or safety, but he kind of played down outside. If it's a cover three, he's typically going to leave that spot. So right here, this is a perfect opportunity just to take this in the opposite direction, although he did a really good job of stopping me there. 
This is your best inside run in the formation. You can flip it with the right stick and really run in either direction you want to go. But you can see typically the direction of design is going to be best. It's just a good uh, run to keep your opponent uh, balanced because the best run is going to be the outside run from this formation. But a lot of times you'll notice that that guard will double team and then get to the next level. And that's typically going to be your read. Now right here there's a guy waiting back there, a safety, so I'll flip it. I'll go towards this hole, make him chase me, and I can still have a better chance for a good inside run. Next up, we have the Jet 6 Drive. Most of the passing plays in this offense are crossing the field, so it's good to have a, a, a you know change of pace to throw to the other side. Just put your B route on a streak, and this is pretty much going to be the read. The A route's a good check down, but the RB route should get open outside of most things. As you can see right here, I'm going to have the bullet, throw it up the field a little bit there. Most of these routes are crossing routes, like most of the passing plays in this formation go across the field. So it's nice to have a play where you can basically go outside the numbers. And that's what this play is going to be right here. The RB route here is going to get open against just about any man or zone because I'm going to streak this tight end to basically pull any coverage off of him. If I have a good running or good uh, route runner or fast tight end running this, it'll beat man as well. Um, I'm not really sure how well it'll work with Richard Rodgers, but you can see even there, he was open. So we have a route that should get open against just about any defense going in a completely different direction than typically I will be on this formation. Next up, we have the PA Sprint Halfback Flat. This is similar to the previous play I showed in a different formation where I'm going to want to motion this guy in so he gets across the line quicker. And then I want to put either the RB route or the B route on a streak. It really doesn't matter which one, but I think the B route is probably best. Your man beater is going to be the X route. He'll cross the field faster now because I motioned him in. And then your zone beater is going to be the Y route and the A route. But it's really going to be three levels of passing, which is going to be really, really what makes this so good. You can see here that looks like a zone coverage. Tight end gets outside of it. The running back in the flats also a very good option, although there I just took the deeper one. Here we have another you know, all our man blitz. I might not really go this route against a man blitz, but I know already that's pretty much just going to be the A route here, which is another good man beater once again, or the crossing receiver, which is really going to be your best two options against man. The tight end should really be, the RB route tight end should really get open against just about anything. It's not the RB route tight end, I'm sorry. It's the uh, the A route tight end should get open against just about anything, just as long as you throw it on timing. Like there, that was a crossbody throw. Didn't really do the best job. But it's still going to be one of the best routes. I also didn't, you know, motion in my uh, my check down, which is really going to be important. Except we got the PA tight end seam. It's another play where all I'm going to do is put the B route here on a drag, and we're pretty much going to be reading the high low routes going across the field. Uh, that's pretty much it. Your comeback route is going to be a good check down. It'll be man or zone. But typically, if I call this play, it's to play off of all the running plays in this formation. I'm really going to hit the B route or the A route. And that's pretty much all I'm going to need to read for the most part, unless the user is Johnny on the spot. You can see right there. I mean, there's nothing really there. Like I said, if you're if you're running the ball successfully, your opponent will have to bite down on the play action on the run plays. Next up, we have the PA X burst cross. This play here is an easy setup. I'm just going to put the B route on a drag. That's all I really got to do. And my crossers are going to be the play. If it's a man coverage, you'll see how the running back really doesn't get open. But the, the two crossing tight ends typically beat man coverage. The running back's really only going to beat zone. You can always put the B route on like an in route too if you find that they're colliding or getting too close together. But when you throw it to the running back, a lot of times that tight end crossing will turn into a blocker. So that's one of the reasons you want that there. So a really easy read. You have your, your B and your A route should be just about anything, man or zone. Uh, like right here, we're just basically playing a levels game as the deep route gets forgotten in the crossers. It looks like it might have been a cover two. And you can see we're just basically working our way from front to back. Real easy read, though. If it's zone coverage, it's going to be the running back. If it's man coverage, it can only be the tight end or, the, or one of the two tight ends. Next up, we got the stretch alert looky. This play here, as long as nobody drops into the lane, you could always throw it to this guy. It's going to be best against man coverage for sure. And this is really a red zone play based off of the, the slant itself. But you also have the option to, to run to this guy here, which is going to be best against cover three and cover four zones because the cornerbacks drop back post snap. Next up, we got the tight end attack. This is a very popular play. It was a meta play uh, in Madden 22. So I'm including it here, even though I never really used that play much there. And I'm not really going to use it too much in Madden 23. Uh, it's a very good play, though. The running back is one of the better options. Um, I don't know why he decided to run the route in the direction that he did. I mean, you can always put him on an out route in the other direction. I find that that's uh, a little bit more effective. But the A route crossing tight end, I know, is a very good play. Um, there's definitely a lot of throwing angles to the three tight ends on the side. Um, that you can 
always take advantage of. Like right here, you can see that uh, the tight end just slips right behind the zone, and you can have a lot of success there. And that, a large portion of that is because of this tight end pulling the routes. You can motion him out too to basically create more space for that. Here, it looks like we have an all-out man blitz, um, which I typically wouldn't recommend running that too. But the A route here is a very good route, even though you know that whole play. I probably wouldn't run that against man blitz at all, to be honest with you, because you can see there's just so much going on there. But you can motion out this B route here, have a lot of success with that, and then you can see how that A route really clears the crossing route for the tight end, even though I have a, probably my worst tight end running the second most important route. Next up, we got the counter weak. So this play here, just a good play. Typically, um, you know, it's an inside run first. I don't really find it has a ton of success to the outside like the diagram shows. But you'll notice that if you start with the inside and then work your way out, a lot of times you can have a big run. Like I said, the first, you know, hole is typically right up the middle. Next up, we have the mesh post. This play is really just all about the drag routes. I mean, there's some good check downs here, but this is a good short yardage play. It's really all that you're going to use this for. It should be the drag routes should be man or zone, anything but hard flat set to zero. Next up, we got the Niners toss. It's another play where if you're going against a defense where the quarterbacks drop back, you typically have the most success. Man coverage, cover three, cover four. Um, these toss plays don't have pulling guards anymore, so they're like a little bit more. Um, consistent. They don't really uh, get, you know, they, they maintain their blocks a lot quicker because they're not pulling and trying to find their blockers. So these toss plays are actually much better than they were in years past. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.